the fourth, the fourth course <laughs> started today. Uh, starting today will be given by Professor Radha Kessa from uh, City University in London. So she's working in uh, block theory, representation theory of finite groups and reductive groups, and she has written a book. No. <laughs> topic as well. And she's going to talk about what theory of what finite group algebras. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for uh, doing all this work to organize this wonderful um, semester here and for letting me come. And uh, yeah, I suppose I should also thank them for letting me talk. Yeah, at this uh, at this uh, workshop. Okay, so uh, yeah, so what is the context? So it's representation theory. It's representation theory of finite groups, and uh, the first uh, uh, sort of point of departure is that we want to do characteristic zero and characteristic P representation theory at the same time. And we want to play off one against, against the other. And the way, I mean, from the way I'm going to present things, mostly it is, uh, well, we would want to get, uh, to get information about characteristic P from characteristic zero, but actually it works in both directions. Okay, so what is the setup? We saw a little bit of that already in Gabriel Navarro's talk in the morning. I'm just going to do it in a slightly more formal way, and my choice of rings will be a little bit different. Actually, the only difference is that I want to work with complete rings. But uh, so the setup is, so you have a prime number P, and then, this is uh, just to recall, okay, the localization of Z at P is all those rational numbers such that the denominator uh, is not divisible by P. So now you get a ring where there's only one maximal ideal, so everything is invertible except multiples of P, okay? And then you, it's convenient, okay, for what I want to say, to complete this. So this is the ring of p-adic integers, and so this is uh, it's the completion of the local uh, localized integers with respect to um, a metric. So you s let the uh, distance between two elements of z p be one over p to the a, um, where you write x minus y as a power of p times some u, where u is an invertible element of this. So in other words, you just pull out from this fraction, you pull out the highest power of, of p, and, um, and this makes z of p a metric space, and then you just complete, as you do in analysis. Okay, and so this is, well, ideally I would love to be able to work with ZP, but for things we want to do, you have to go a bit bigger, okay? So let me tell you what that is. So I'm not going to be super formal here, but uh, it's really, I want to go a bit bigger than ZP, but keep the essential characteristics of uh, ZP. So I'm going to replace ZP with an extension O and uh, define it by certain properties. So I want that this is going to be a principal ideal domain. And uh, I want it to be local, so I want, just like ZP, it's going to have a unique uh, maximal ideal with a generator pi, so it's a principal ideal, so it has a generator pi, uh, pi O, and I want uh, that P should belong to this ideal. Uh, and, and here I just say complete with respect to the metric, there's not much point in my writing what this is, but it's the obvious thing, with respect to metric, some metric which extends uh, the metric I wrote down for ZP, okay? Okay, so this, uh, this is sort of the ring I really want to work with, okay? And 
once I have this ring, then I get two fields out of it. So O has a maximal ideal pi O. So if I uh, quotient out, I will get a field. And uh, uh, because P was in the maximal ideal, this is just like in Gabriel's talk, the characteristic of little k uh, will be uh, P. And because, well, this was all sort of starting out taking place in a ring of characteristic zero, if I go to the field of fractions, of O, which makes sense because O is an integral domain, it's even a principal ideal domain, then I get a field of characteristic uh, zero. Okay, and uh, I'm going to make an assumption here on the field little k. So I'm going to assume that K is an algebraic closure of FP bar, so, okay. Okay, and uh, once you have this, okay, now Chris told me a way uh, that I'm supposed to do work these boards to get the maximal mileage out of them. This guy goes up, right, and this guy comes down. Okay, um, and so the, picture, so the picture we get here, and that's the picture we want to keep in mind for the entire, uh, entire lecture, is you have this ring O, and it has a field of fractions inside which it's a subfield, uh, subring, because it sits inside, and if you reduce modulo pi, you get to your field uh, of characteristic P, and this is usually in the literature, such a triple is called a P-modular system. Okay, and uh, let me write here, just make some uh, n general notation, okay, so which will be in use uh, sort of all through. So if R is any commutative ring uh, with one, I mean usually R is going to be one of these three guys here, or capital K or little k. Uh, and then, well, for RG, we'll always stand for the group uh, algebra of G over R. So G is always going to be a finite group. And just to recall, this is just simply as a set, it consists of formal linear combinations of the group elements um, with coefficients in R, and you make it into an R algebra uh, just by uh, making the multiplication be the R linear extension of multiplication in the group, okay? So, and, uh, and whenever I talk about an RG module or uh, in fact for any, uh, over any R algebra, so R all modules will be finitely generated, left uh, RG uh, modules. And uh, the other thing I want to say is, yeah, and so we also, I will be using, of course, mod RG, which is the category of finitely generated left. RG modules. Okay, so, so the first thing, well, so the picture, I mean, this is the picture on the coefficients. But this picture then gives us, so we have three group rings, OG contained in capital KG, and uh, subjecting onto little KG. Just, this is inclusion here, this is just reduced coefficients modulo, modulo pi. Okay. okay. And we want to consider these three, three guys together, so uh, representations over these three different uh, rings, or the structure of these as algebras, okay? Same thing. Okay, uh, 
so just a couple of things to set the stage. There's a big difference, of course, between considering capital KG and little KG, okay? And what is the fundamental sort of bifurcation between them? So every surjective map uh, phi of KG modules splits. This is what's behind Mashki's theorem or whatever. Let me just uh, give you the standard averaging argument which works, you know, which we use all the time in representation theory of finite groups. So what do we do? Well, these are finitely generated KG modules. So they are finite dimensional vector spaces. Uh, vector spaces are bases. You have a surjective map. So you first pick any splitting as K, as K vector spaces, so B, A, a splitting, so, uh, yes, W to B, B a K, a K vector space map such that if you compose psi zero with phi, you get the identity uh, of W. And then you do an averaging, okay? So now you let psi be the sum as G runs over uh, the elements of G, G times psi zero of uh, G inverse of W. I have to write some things here. So psi is going to be the map from W to V defined by, this is uh, psi of uh, W. Uh, this map, and crucially, okay, I need to do something here. I divide by the order of G, okay? So if I take this, this map where I sort of average out uh, the effect of psi zero across the group, of, group elements, this is the required splitting, okay? This is going to be a map of G modules, and it will still have the property that if I compose it with phi, I will get the identity. Okay, so this one uh, is what we are looking for. And this also shows you why we need, so why this will work over capital K, but it won't work over, uh, necessarily over fields of positive characteristic, okay? Because you can't put this, um, uh, put this uh, denominator here. And in some sense, I mean a lot of modular representation theory is trying to deal with the fact that you cannot invert this G, okay? And we, try to do it in many, many different ways, okay? Uh, and hopefully some of that will come out in, in the series of lectures. Okay, so what does this mean? If you want to think of KG as, a, as an algebra, finite dimension algebra, that means that uh, every, every module is projective or every, every module is a sum of its simple constituents. And or in other words, KG as an algebra is a product of simple algebras. Okay, and uh, the, of course, the point is that uh, if, uh, so if P divides uh, the order of G and R is O or K, then not every subjective map splits. And there's an example for a map which will never split, it is just you take the map that goes from RG to R. Uh, this map is a subjective map of where you think of RG as a left RG module by multiplication, R is a trivial. RG module and this map does not spend. Okay, so that tells you that therefore the, this group algebra of G over R or over little k uh, will for sure have some factors which are not simple, okay? And so we want to study, so if they're not simple, what, what, what do they look like, okay? And so here's the definition then. So a block, so R here is going to be either O or K, and then a block 
of Rg is an indecomposable um, direct factor factor of Rg. Okay. Okay, and I've used, I mean, I'm def defining it sort of over O and K together, and that's because uh, whether you're doing block decomposition over R or over O or over little K, it's the same thing. So maybe I can, uh, let's see, that guy. So some uh, sort of uh, standard facts, which are not, they're just, uh, you're just using the fact that the R is a Noetherian ring and uh, G is a finite group. So it's a finite dimensional Noetherian uh, ring, RG, that this has a unique uh, decomposition into blocks. So this is different from, say, talking about decomposing into indecomposable, a module into indecomposable uh, summands because that is not a unique on the nose uh, uh, phenomenon, but block decomposition is really unique. So every group uh, can be uniquely written as a product of its blocks, okay? So, uh, and already we talked about, I mean, in Gabriel's talk, the uh, lecture this morning, we, we uh, saw, you know, how much, like what, there, there's lots of questions around how many such factors you have and so on. Okay, so then if you look at, uh, I, I should, let me write this. So corresponding to a, uh, to the block decomposition, these are all algebras, are algebras in their own right. Of course, you get a direct, uh, some decomposition of categories okay here we think of so we want to think of a block as an algebra in its own right but its modules are also modules for the finite ambient finite group so you just pull back you have a rg there's a so i'm just going to write this and then so every block is a quotient of Rg. So every module for, uh, for uh, a block becomes a module for Rg via the pullback. And we think of these things uh, always like this, okay? So you just pull back along this thing. Uh, okay, the one other thing which I already said before, that the blocks of Og are in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, the blocks uh, of Kg. And this is just via the reduction modulo P uh, um, operation. So B is an O algebra. You reduce, you reduce Quo uh, coefficients modulo, modulo pi, and uh, you get a K algebra, and this is going to be a block of uh, little kg. Okay, and then let me also write down here, lastly, so this is with respect to this picture here. So you start with B, uh, which is some uh, factor of OG. You go down, you get a algebra, which is a block algebra over little kg. But of course, you can also extend scalars, to, and you will get a subalgebra of Kg. It will be a direct factor, but it will be, in general, it will be a product of several uh, simple factors. So B is a block of Kg, uh, of OG. Then that implies that K tensored over O uh, with B is a product. of uh, several, possibly, simple uh, algebras, K algebras.
Okay, so maybe I should just do a, a very small example. No, let me just first say there are two extreme cases, depending on the, uh, on the group, on the nature of the group, and that's good to have in mind. And remember, the whole, the whole, um, the whole starting of the whole thing was that we couldn't, that P was dividing the order of, the, of, of G, okay? So two extreme cases. Oh gosh, I forgot this one, right? Okay, no, I'm gonna start again, because we don't need this. Okay, I'm gonna do this, yeah, yeah, right. Middle, middle, back, no, middle, front, back. <laughs> middle, front, back, yeah, okay, got it, got it. Okay, so, um, right, so two extreme cases. So first case, well, if G is a P group, so the only prime that divides uh, the order of G is P, is the prime that we are doing the representation theory at. In this case, you only get one block. Okay, and uh, these are all quite easy, uh, easy things to see. And uh, if you're in the other extreme, if, it's a P, if G is a P prime group, then you get as many blocks as possible. So then the blocks, then K tensor O B is simple for every block. B of O G, okay, so uh, you get as many factors as, as is uh, possible. Okay, so let's do a small example, very small example, just to, uh, uh, just to get a feeling for this. So let's take the symmetric group on three letters, okay? And let's look at the um, group algebra over, of S3 over, uh, over the field of characteristic zero. Now this is really just like, you can think of it as over the complex numbers here. So there are two irreducible characters of dimension one, and then there's one irreducible character of dimension two. So the, the group algebra has this decomposition, k cross k cross two k. Okay, so now if p is two, then uh, what happens? These two guys sort of get scrunched into a block, and this guy stays on his own. So we get OS3, has two blocks, and this second block is just a matrix algebra. Okay, over. Um, and in fact, if I want to write them out as what they are, so this B1 is just the group algebra of the cyclic group, well, the only group of order two, and B2 is a two by two uh, matrix algebra. Okay, and if P is three, well, S3 is not a three group, but it is still the case that OS3 is indecomposable. And if you go to higher primes, well then they're, they're, you don't, those primes don't divide the order of the group, so you just get OS3 is O cross O across the two by two matrices. Okay, so what's, um, so what we want to study is we want to understand these block algebras, okay? And they, there's lots of aspects of these block algebras that one can try to understand, and they give rise to a whole host of uh, interesting mathematics, but What's, in one way, what's, what's, um, what's a way to, no, I'm doing this wrong. Put that up. Oh, put that up and put this guy down. Yes, 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 yeah. Complicated. Okay. So what is the, um, 
philosophy, if you like, for uh, these lectures, okay? Um, is that there are only a few blocks. Okay, and what I mean by few is, I mean, it means different things to different people, okay? And I try to go through various uh, meanings of the word few, okay? Of course, few we want in terms of representation theory, right? So, I mean, if you have an algebra, which is a block algebra, you can always find another block algebra of some other finite group, which has a block algebra, which is just a matrix algebra over the one you began with. So you don't want to, you want to get, you know, you don't, you can't control that. Yeah, so you want to just, when I say few, I mean in terms of module categories. Okay, so let me just here uh, introduce some more notation, um, just, which is all very standard, but just in case. Um, it's to remind you of, uh, of these things. So if you have two R algebras, A and B, so A and, so you have two R algebras, this, let me call them B and B prime. B and B prime R algebras are Morita equivalent. We said they're Morita equivalent. if uh, mod b is the same as mod b prime, it's equivalent as R linear categories. Okay, um, and if R is a field, there's a way in which you can recast, uh, let, let me actually not say R is a field, let me, let me take the case that R is K or capital K, no, let me just take K here. Okay, let R be just, if an R is K, then uh, two algebras, so um, a finite dimensional K algebra, uh, A is called basic if the dimension uh, of S is one for every simple A module. Okay, so it's very small uh, in uh, sense. And uh, again, two facts from fa finite dimensional algebras. Uh, standard fact is that if A, every finite dimensional algebra uh, over K, has a basic algebra, to which it is Morita equivalent, okay? So if you want to study module categories of finite dimensional algebras, it's enough to do, uh, to study basic algebras or describe the basic algebra of your algebra. And uh, the other thing is that if B, B prime are Morita equivalent, if and only if they're basic algebras, are isomorphic. as K algebras, okay? So in other words, if you want to classify algebras up to Morita equivalence, it's the same as classifying um, finite dimensional basic algebras up to isomorphism, okay? Uh, and all, it, all you do in going from, the, from an algebra to its basic algebra is you chuck away multiplicities of, of simple modules and dimensions. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do before I sort of go on to more, um, you know, actual definitions and things is give you a very first um, taster of this philosophy. Why are there very few uh, blocks? Okay, so this is an example that I've taken from an article of Marcus Linkelmann from uh, 2000 and 
16. And what he did was, he, I think he went as far as he could go. He went up to dimension 12, okay? And he, try, he listed all possible algebras that can be basic algebras of blocks, okay? So, I mean, if you think about 12-dimensional, you take a field, looking at 12-dimensional basic algebras, there's going to be loads of them, okay? There's loads of local ones. But uh, what I want to show you with this example is that very few of those can actually show up as a block, okay? So let me just give you that uh, table. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but... Okay, so what's the, what's, the, what's the setup? So A0 uh, is a basic algebra of a block of KG, some finite group G, don't care what the group is. Uh, and okay, and we, we are playing this game. So you, here I have listed the dimensions, I'm gonna go up to 12, okay. Then here are the possible primes that can occur, that, that give you a block of that, uh, whose basic algebra has that dimension. And then, uh, well, what are the actual algebras that, that show up, okay? So let's start with one-dimensional algebras. And this is the same thing as was coming up in um, uh, Gabriel's talk in a different way, yeah? This is, this is a, it relates to characters of defect zero. It is that situation, basically. So you can't really control it in any way. All primes will show up. Okay, so you, every prime will contribute such a block, but it doesn't matter because uh, the basic algebra, of course, is just gonna be K because this is the only one dimensional algebra. Okay, so that's all right. Let's go to two. Then the only possible prime is two. So already now you have to start working a little bit. And the only possible basic algebra, block basic algebra is KC2 doesn't look very, it looks like this is going to be a very short subject because if you look at the list, it, uh, but it gets rapidly more interesting. So th three dimensions, only possible prime is three. The only possible algebra is um, the group algebra of the cyclic group of order, three. By the way, P group algebras are their blocks, but they're also basic algebras because they have only one simple module uh, as a dimension, one, okay? Okay, dimension four, only prime is two. And you get both uh, possibly uh, group algebras of the groups of order four. And five, the same thing. Okay, uh, so that is not very interesting, but then you see it gets a little bit better or worse, depending on your point of view. So if your dimension is six, then the only possibility is three. And we've already seen this, uh, this block, KS3, it happens to be basic as well. Okay, and it's, it's a block, so. Okay, and then when you go up to seven, suddenly now something happens, two primes are possible. So you get the group algebra of C7, and you get what is a very uh, uh, important class of algebras occurring in uh, block theory of finite groups. Uh, this is a Brouwer tree algebra. So this is a Brouwer tree algebra for those who know. If you don't know, it does not matter. It's a particular type of finite dimensional algebra. Uh, and it has, this one has two simple modules, and this is indicating the exceptional vertex, and the multiplicity is two, okay? Okay, then at the prime, at the dimension eight, you get two possibilities. You can, of course, get the group algebra of any group of order eight, and you also get another Brouwer tree algebra. Okay, I guess nine was the, in this list is the most difficult uh, case, if I understand correctly. Okay, this is really using, already at this point, we are using some rather non-trivial block theory to get to this stage, okay? Uh, and here as well, the only possible prime is three, but there are, well, these are these group algebras of the groups of order nine. It's a Brouwer tree algebra. There's one twisted uh, group algebra, okay? Uh, this, if you look at this, this is really the presentation for the group algebra of C3 cross C3, except the commutation relations have been uh, twisted, okay? Um, and then there's one other possibility, okay, which I have not uh, written down. Okay, and then you have 10, 11, and then at 12, it, again, it happens the only prime is two, and there's only one possibility, which is group algebra of A4. Okay, so if you, I mean, yeah, so for me this is quite, quite striking because, as I said before, there's loads and loads 
of algebras of a given dimension. There's loads and loads of even local algebras, you know, where there's only one simple module and um, uh, of dimension one. And, uh, but still, the fact that you're coming from a group is imposing some strong conditions on, 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 the stru on your possible structures. Okay, so now I want to start making a, uh, some sort of inroad into how we can go further, a little bit further with this philosophy. So I'm going to introduce um, an invariant, a number, which is also shown up in Gabriel's talk earlier this morning. But in a slightly different guise. Okay, so Okay, uh, defects of B is going to be some block of OG, and G is some, uh, some finite group G, okay? And I just need a, a piece of notation. So, of course, every module, as I've already said right in the beginning, for me, all modules are going to be finitely generated, but because O is not a field, I have to, uh, I have to uh, say a little bit about the sort of modules I want to consider for this uh, next definition. So a B lattice uh, is a B module, so in, uh, in particular an OG module, which is finitely generated. And free as O module. So there should be a basis, O basis. Okay, this is automatic, of course, for fields. But um, and so here is the definition of a defect of a block. Okay, so the defect uh, D of B uh, of B is the least. a non-negative integer d such that the following holds. For any map phi going from u to v of b lattices, The map p to the d phi, so I just multiply phi with p to the d, and I still have a map from u to v. I want that that should factor through a projective b lattice. So. Uh, I could just say module, same thing. Okay, so what that means is that I can stick a module in between U and V and I can make this map factor through them, okay? And uh, if, if you went for John Carlton's talk last Friday, this is, you see, this is just a condition on, a, on the stable category, which is a, uh, we're doing it over O, so it should really be the relatively O stable category, but I'm using lattices, so this is what it is. So it's in some sense, it's the exponent, or it's, it's the annihilator, this P to the D, is the annihilator of the stable module category, okay? In the, uh, okay, by the way, I should say there are many, many definitions of defect, okay? Uh, I've chosen this because uh, well, I wanted to do it without introducing defect groups uh, in this first lecture, so I just wanted to do it this way. Okay, and so it's, of course, easy, easy uh, to see that if you have two blocks and they have the same defect, then they are Morita equivalent. Uh, before I say this, I'm going to say, we are going to say that B is a D block.
if d of b is equal to d. Now, I mean, the way I've uh, written this, it's not even clear that such an integer exists, okay? But actually it exists, and this is nothing again to do with group algebras. It is just, it, this definition makes sense. Maybe to make it very good, you should change it slightly, but anyway, it makes sense and you will get an integer. You start with any O algebra, which is, uh, uh, which is an O order, okay, whose extension to capital K is semi-simple. Then this defect will be, uh, will be uh, uh, well-defined and it will, be a, it will be a finite integer. And so the thing now, the next thing I want to say is that in blocks of finite, for blocks of finite groups algebras, this, this integer here is exercising a lot of control, okay, or should be exercising a lot of control on the structure, okay? So this is easy to see that if uh, B and B prime are Morita equivalent, well, maybe not totally easy, but it's uh, the case, then uh, they have the same uh, they have the same um, defect. Converse is not true. Uh, is not true, uh, but, so here is the, uh, there's a conjecture, which says it's true up to finitely many possibilities. So there are, only finitely many D blocks up to Morita equivalence. So I should say that for this, uh, for this uh, conjecture to have content, I should say that if you fix a non-negative integer D, there are infinitely many groups Okay, which will have a D block. So the, you really have to go through a very infinite, uh, you, know, you have to do some work to boil uh, down, uh, well, to solve this conjecture. Okay, this is a conjecture uh, due to Donovan. I should make a remark here that uh, Donovan only conjectured, uh, so original formulation, original formulation, is only over the residue field, so it was over uh, little k. So that is for blocks over of little kg. Okay, so this one is a, like, a souped-up version, and I actually would like to emphasize uh, this souped-up version because, first of all, if we want to really connect mod p representation theory to mod uh, zero, rep I mean, to characteristic zero representation theory. We, sh we need information at the level of O. And the other reason why I want to, um, uh, want to flag it up is that it's much harder. At least seems to be much harder to, even if you can get partial answers over little k, then to lift them to O, uh, I guess this is a common problem in number theory, yeah? It's lifting uh, to the periodic uh, can be very hard. At least I don't know of any examples of two block algebras which are Morita equivalent over the residue field, but which were not Morita equivalent to begin with. So maybe these two formulations over O and little k are the same. I don't know that. Okay, and there's a lot of work around this, uh, around this conjecture. It is, comp it is uh, very open. And I mean, if you look at that definition and you look at the conjecture, it just seems, you know, it seems uh, quite, quite startling that that small integer, which small invariant of the stable module category is, con is, supposed, to, uh, is supposed to control the entire uh, module category. Okay, so I should say, well, so like I said, there's lots of work being done on this, especially um, if you, instead of looking at all possible D blocks, you restrict yourself to certain families of finite groups like P solvable groups or uh, families of uh, uh, finite simple groups of Lie type. You know, there, there is a lot of uh, work uh, going on. 
and that has gone on, but I won't, I won't list the things because that's not, uh, don't have the time for that. I will say, what are the cases for which D do we know this totally? Okay, um, actually, and th that looks bad. I'm writing it because it's such a short list, so I can, uh, but it makes it look as though uh, nothing is happening, which is not the case at all. A lot is happening, okay? So D equals zero. This is uh, uh, very easy because it's basically saying that everything is projective, okay? So your, in some sense, your block algebras are just going to be matrix algebras. So this is very, very easy. D equals one. This is already a huge chunk of modular representation theory. This is going back to Brouwer's uh, sort of treatment of blocks whose seal of P subgroup is cyclic of order P. All of these algebras that showed up here, these ones, these diagram, uh, diagram ones, they are uh, corresponding to D equals one. Uh, they come, uh, these are Brouwer tree algebras. It's a lot of work on this case, or more generally for cyclic defect, which I will come to next time. Uh, but so here I should say, for the purpose of um, Donovan's conjecture, the reference is uh, Janusz Kupisch over the field of characteristic P, and then Pleskin did a lot of work over the uh, p addicts, yeah, over uh, lifting to O. And then the final, final thing, a description is uh, due to Linkelmann. So this started in the 70s, this is in the 70s, and, or late 60s even, and this is maybe late 80s. And then there's one other case known, which is D equals two, but only for the prime two, P equals two. So P equals three, D equals two. If you could do this uh, conjecture, it would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, so try. Uh, I strongly urge uh, people to try. So P equals two. And here, this is a part, I mean, falls out of work of uh, Karen Erdman, the 1980s. And that is also over, over um, uh, little k. And over O is also, again, I think, as well as I know. Okay, and again, I want to stress that in each, in both of these cases, the lifting to O um, is, is not at all uh, uh, trivial. And there are many cases where we have been able to answer some partial form of Donovan's conjecture over little k, but we, are st it's, we can't do it over O. Okay, so how much time? I do not have any time at all. Five minutes. Okay, I promised Olivier I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna do, the, yes, the decomposition numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, five minutes. Okay. 10? No, but I started at, okay, 55. Well, going. I'm going, yeah, I'm losing, I'm losing time, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, so let's not calculate this, I'm losing a lot of time here. Okay, so now, so this is for me, uh, I mean, Don, this finiteness conjecture, it's like a over, one of the overarching themes, uh, but there's lots of sub things, right, that come out of this and where you could uh, hope to, uh, you know, make progress and it would be very interesting. Um, So instead of looking at the whole module category, you could focus on a particular invariant, okay, of the module category. So let me say here, uh, so we have our block B, and then we have a corresponding picture where we get the semi-simple algebra B, and we get uh, the um, algebra over the field of characteristic P. Okay, so as we've been saying before, this guy as an algebra is, well, semi-simple, and if capital K is big enough, which I'm going to gloss over, this is just a direct product of matrix algebras, okay, and chi, where chi Uh, 
runs through, either you can think of them as characters, as Gabriel introduced, or as simple modules for this algebra, okay? And n chi is just the dimension of chi, okay? Which is chi of one, if you're thinking character theoretically. Okay, so that's a nice semi-simple algebra. Well, k tends to over the residue field, it is not, uh, this is not semi-simple, but uh, it's Artinian, so you could mod out by its radical, and then you would get a similar picture, you would get a product of matrix algebras, let me call it n psi over little k, and the same thing. Okay, and uh, the number of these factors, these integers n chi, n psi, these are uh, very, very important, okay? So what can we, well, let me just give, no, I must get to decomposition numbers, so I'm gonna skip everything else and just go to decomposition numbers. And then I'll stop, okay. Now, one, so let's think about modules, okay? You start with a module for B. You can go to a module for either of the two algebras, right? But you really want to go directly from the uh, module in characteristic zero to module in characteristic P, okay? So how do you do that? So I'm going to show you uh, that process and then I'm really gonna have to stop. Sorry, Olivier. So if I start with the K, uh, K tensor over, over B module, and I let, um, just pick any basis of it. Okay. Then I'm going to make a module for B. Okay, by that, and I just do a very simple-minded thing. I'm going to let VO be just the O span of all the elements X, E, I, where X belongs to, uh, to belongs to B, okay? This is going to be an O module. It will be an, actually a lattice Okay, it will be a, a B, B lattice. If you extend it to capital K, you will get V, okay, because it's sitting inside V. And now you could reduce this modulo little k. Now there's a problem. This is not well defined, okay, in the sense that everything is depending very heavily on the choice of this basis. And this is really a wild problem. Yeah, you can get many, many lattices. Uh, for the same module that you started with, but the good news is that it's well defined if you pass to Groth and D groups, okay? So I'm just going to write that, okay? So you get the map, so you start with this, V, and I'm passing to Groth and D group uh, language, so this is the class of V in the Groth and D uh, group, so it's a bit fast. This map is not well defined at the level of modules, but uh, uh, gives rise to a very nice map to the decomposition map, a group homomorphism actually, let me call it uh, just D decomposition map from Okay, and these are, this map, if you restrict it to irreducible um, simple modules from capital K, express the answer in terms of simple modules over little k. Pardon? This? Lower case B. Oh, 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 B, uh, sorry, in my mind, little capital B is always little b, yeah. So uh, they, sorry about that. Uh, those are the numbers, decomposition numbers that Gabriel talked about. It's the same map, the star map that came up in uh, Gabriel's talk. 
and uh, finding those numbers is a big problem in, uh, in block theory. And so Olivier is going to talk about that tomorrow. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm way over time. I'm going to stop. Could you say a little more about the Brouwer tree algebras and that came up there and what their role in the story is? So the actual, the, the, uh, the actual theorem behind it is that if you have any block with cyclic defect group, which I'm not defined, I will define it tomorrow, uh, then the module, the, the block is always a Bravo tree algebra. Okay. And this, this is a big, uh, actually if and only if it's a Bravo tree algebra, if and only if the defect group is a uh, cyclic group. Bravo tree algebra is tomorrow? Um, I wasn't really uh, planning to because it would take, it's a, yeah, and uh, yeah. But I mean, there's loads of experts here who know everything about power tree algebras. And so, but anyway, it's, it's um, well, I can say that it's, it's, uh, it's the only class of finite representation type algebras that occurs in block theory. Hmm. Okay. So, so this is worth getting familiar with. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. So we were talking about blocks over the finite field and then blocks in character zero. Yeah. So, and then we had this theorem of Winkleman. Well, before that we were talking about uh, basic algebras. Right. Which occurred over the finite field. Yeah. So then when we're talking in characters zero, we didn't have basic algebras. No. So they don't exist. Or that's nice this is a, it's a very good question. Okay. It's, I mean, it's very hard to, um, so I mean, take any of these algebras, try to lift it to O. You can do it in many, many ways. Oh, but you have so your theory of numerator equivalence, so you can look then for good representatives from each other. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I misunderstood your question. Yes, yeah, so the, to find it, you can have a good. Um, so how you get to a basic algebra is you just take uh, one uh, representative of each simple module, and you take its endomorphism ring. If you wanted to do it over over O, what you do is you take primitive idempotents, okay. and then you just truncate. You take one from each class and you truncate your algebra at that, and that would be the lift of the basic algebra. Yeah. Uh, another question, maybe this is too hard, but so when we had these, these lists, yeah. so, uh, so it's, it's, I was asking myself, so uh, I would wanna know when, for which, if I look at a group and a P, does this block occur? Oh uh, yeah, so in fact, uh, they all occur, the ones I wrote down, yep. except for the one in, uh, the, in dimension nine, there was one which we don't know whether it comes or not. I, I see whether it comes up in any. Yeah. Group. But if I have a specific group, yeah. you can ask, does this block? Because that has to be a hard question because Gabriel gave a very difficult answer. That's the right. First line. Defect. Yes, it is but, a very hard. Theoretically, maybe there's some meaning to it, it, it occurring in, in a group J. Yeah, I mean, this this is exactly what we would like to be able to do. Okay. What uh, can we axiomatize? Yeah, the properties of a finite dimensional algebra, which tell us that it is a block or not, and it's, it's far. I, I would say our understanding is far, far from complete on that picture. So, I'm sorry, so the conjecture in the middle board that you have the uh, original conjecture of a K. Yeah. So, with the basic algebras, that would be equivalent to saying that there's finitely many basic algebras for, for, each, for each number D. Yeah. There's finitely, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, because uh, all the bounds that people, Brouwer himself has, uh, um, he um, gave some bounds, not for this, uh, Morita equivalence, but for Cartan numbers. Uh, uh, which is uh, known to be false. I mean, there is a, a, I'd run out of time, but I would have said there is a conjectural bound on the most, uh, sort of the first invariant. Let me write that down anyway here, uh, because it's such a famous conjecture. And now that you asked the question, so there's a famous conjecture of Brouwer, which tells you how many guys you would have here. So this is Brouwer's K of B conjecture, it has a name. So if I look at a block algebra, and I just want to count uh, the number of simple, mo uh, simple characteristic zero modules, irreducible characters, 
this should be less than or equal to p to the d. This is a conjectural bound. We know that this is, the, in fact, the only invariant which we can satisfactorily bound. We know there is a bound, but it's quadratic That's, uh, for this particular invariant. So this is also, uh, lots of people here are very interested in this particular conjecture. I should write question mark, because it's a conjecture. D is DLB. D is DLB, yeah. So it's purely in terms of the, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, the, uh, well, the, if, yes, the point here is that uh, this algebra is, um, uh, is semi-simple, okay? So that tells you that every module k is killed by some power of, you know, has this, uh, uh, if you start with some. And then what you do is, I think the easiest way to do it is you go to bimodules. So you look at B as a bimodule over itself you will get a number for B, okay? Uh, and then that number will be a universal number for all, all, for all maps that I've written down here. That's why I said it's maybe not, what the way I wrote it is probably not the best way. Maybe the bimodule bound is the best one, but that I don't know is actually the defect in this situation, so that's fine, yeah. So it's not too, I mean, it's not too difficult yeah, to see that there is a bound. Yeah. 